This is the new 15 inch M3 MacBook Air. And yes, if you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I've got an M2 15 inch MacBook Air in, well, in Starlight. I promise this is the M3 version. Apple has sent it to me to review and well, there's quite a lot to talk about. Apple tells us that the MacBook Air is the world's most popular laptop. Now, no matter what you think about that, I just love this thing. I even prefer my 15 inch MacBook Air over my very expensive, four times as expensive, 14 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro. If you've ever owned a MacBook Air before, you'll know how lovable they are. You just fall in love with this thing so easily. And even the redesign, which is a significant departure from the, the wedge of old, even this redesign is just a, it's just a lovely, lovely thing. This week, Apple invited me to their UK headquarters in Battersea to check out the M3 MacBook Air. And we got a chance to see how some professional creators are using these laptops in their careers. Those included writers and performers performers, students, even a custom bicycle manufacturer, and Tom Hitchens from Byte Review fame. But Apple also showed us what this thing can do in terms of graphical performance, AI. That is something I think we're going to see and hear a lot from Apple this year. But the big question is, should you buy one of these today? Well, let's get straight into it after today's sponsor. Now I'm yet to find a password manager as capable and as affordable as Roboform, and I have worked with these guys to get you a very tasty discount. If you're using a password manager that is too expensive or just doesn't do the things that you want it to do or isn't cross-platform, you know, if you have a Windows machine and a Mac and you can't sync your passwords between them and your Android phone and your iPhone, I'm talking about me here, Roboform syncs across every single platform and it stores everything from your login details to your secret notes, passport details, anything you want to keep secure, you just stick it in RoboForm and you never have to worry. And the best thing is they have a no breach history. And they have this fantastic time-saving one-click login feature which does what it says on the tin. So you go to your favorite website, go to login, and one click gets you in. You can also share login details with your friends and family very securely. And if you're not around, if, uh, if something goes wrong and you're not there to get into your stuff but you need someone else to get into it, there is an emergency access feature. And and if anything goes wrong, which is very unlikely, I've never had a problem with RoboForm. They do have 24 seven support. But like I said earlier, I do have a very good discount for anyone who watches this channel and wants the best and the most capable and the most affordable password manager on the market. Go and check it out below. Right, let's talk about the pricing and the specs of the M3 MacBook Air. So it comes in two sizes, the 15 inch version, which is this one here, and the 13 inch version. And and the 13 inch version, which is this one here, this is actually the M2 edition, but it's the closest one I had to hand. And the one that you go for depends entirely on how big you want that display to be. Now I switched to the 15 inch because I wanted more screen estate, but there's something to be said for the portability of this smaller one, the 13 inch. It's, it's incredibly, I nearly said pocketable, it's not pocketable, but it's an incredibly portable laptop, which sounds weird, but these days laptops are getting bigger and heavier and what have you. Having said that, the 15 inch, you, you don't know it's in your backpack. Both laptops start with eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of storage, but they can be configured with up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory and two terabytes of storage. Now the arguments about eight gigabytes of unified memory in 2024 keep rolling on and on and on, but I've been using an eight gig MacBook Air for the last last four years, first with the M1 version and now with the M2 version, and it works. For my tasks, which is writing, admin, I don't do video editing with it because I have you know, an M3 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro for that, but for everything else, simple admin tasks, they it just works brilliantly. Now I think the sweet spot, the sweet spec, if you've got the budget for it, is the M3 with the 16 gig of unified memory and the one terabyte SSD. In the UK for the 15 inch version, that will cost you 1,899 pounds, which might sound like a lot of money, but when you bear in mind that the power that you're getting there and the longevity and the resale value further down the line, I think is unmatched. And more importantly, you'll have a laptop that will delight you every single day. Every time I use my 15 inch MacBook Air, I just love it. Now going back to the spec choices, you can't do much with that M3 chip itself. So in the 15 inch version, it has an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. The 13 inch version starts with an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU.
you. So it has two less cores. Will you notice that? Probably not. And to be honest, if you want the 13 inch version and you have a bit more budget to play with above that base price, then I'd put it into memory. I'd, I'd put it into unified memory, get the 16 gig. And if you've still got a bit of money left over, get some more storage. In terms of the rest of the specs, you get 18 hours of battery life, spatial audio support, touch ID, and that lovely liquid retina display. When it comes to ports, there's MagSafe, which is just utterly brilliant. I, I love the fact Apple has brought that back and two Thunderbolt ports. And this time with this M3 version, you can drive two external displays. You can't do that with the M1 or the M2 MacBook Air. Now there is a, it's not really a caveat, but in, in order for this to work, you have to leave the laptop in clamshell mode. So you have to have the lid closed. If you do that, it can drive two 5K monitors, which is bonkers. So if you do want to drive two displays from your M3 MacBook Air, you do need a keyboard and a mouse. And I think the M3 MacBook Air has had a bit of a price cut because I need to double check this, but I'm fairly sure this is the case. The 13 inch base model version of the M3 MacBook Air starts at £1,099, which is 200 quid cheaper than the M2 version that it replaces. And my 15 inch M2 MacBook Air, which is the base model, that cost me £1,399 in 2023. The M3 version of the 15 inch, the base model, is £1,299. So a hundred quid saving there as well. There are some other changes over the M2 version which are definitely worth talking about. The first one is the fact that if you go for the midnight colour, this is the midnight M2 MacBook Air, which is, it's a fingerprint magnet. There's no two ways about it, which is a shame because it's such a lovely colour. The new version, the M3 version, has got a, what's it called? An anodization seal that reduces fingerprints. Now, I can't test that because Apple sent me the starlight color, but I do have the very dark M3 Max MacBook Pro, and that has a, I think it has the same coating on it, on it basically. I can confirm that that does not pick up smudges anywhere near as much as this. So that is a very welcome change. The M3 MacBook Air also gets Wi-Fi 6E, which is twice as fast as the M2 generation. That's it, actually. There's nothing else to talk about apart from the fact that you get the M3 chip in this, and that is quite a big deal. So according to Apple, the M3 MacBook Air is 35% faster than the M1 version, and it delivers 20% better performance than the M2 edition. And if you're coming from an Intel MacBook Air, you can expect up to 13 times better performance. It's biblical. But it also benefits from the graphics upgrades that we saw with the M3 chip last year. So those include dynamic caching, hardware accelerated mesh shading, and ray tracing. So if you're a gamer, which I'm not, this is a very interesting proposition if you're all also a Mac person. It also has that faster and more efficient neural engine, neural, why is that such a hard word to say? Which gives Apple the opportunity to say AI. They've been doing this for years. Machine learning, AI, whatever you wanna call it, has sat at the heart of the Mac for a long time. And I think come WWDC this year, we're gonna hear those two letters even more. Now, if you know me, you know that I don't do benchmarks. I would genuinely rather connect my teeth to the mains than do that. But what I will say is that my experience with the M3 chip has been nothing but positive. It is such an amazing computing platform. And that brings me to the question of who should buy the M3 MacBook Air. The first thing to say is that if you're watching this and you have an Intel MacBook Air or an Intel anything, and you're looking at this and you're thinking, hmm, should I just do it? Trust me, you will not believe how far things have come with this. It's just the power that you get and the headroom and the battery life, guys. If you're coming from an Intel Mac, just buy this. The only thing to bear in mind is that once you start specking this thing up, you do start creeping into MacBook Pro territory. And I get a lot of questions from people saying, look, I've, I've specced up the 15 inch MacBook Air. I've put 24 gig of unified memory in there. I've chosen the, the, the two terabyte SSD storage and it's creeping into MacBook Pro territory. Now there is absolutely a point there. If you find yourself creeping into MacBook Pro land, it might be that you need one. However, it's heavier and it will be more expensive because once you get into MacBook Pro land, you'll start specking that up anyway and you'll just keep going and spending more money. I would find the sweet spot for the MacBook Air, which I still think is the M3, 16 gig of unified memory and the one terabyte storage. There is just one caveat. 
So if you've got an Intel MacBook Air, just buy one of these today. There's a reason that Apple is focusing so intently on the performance difference between the Intel generation and the M3 generation. They know that there's loads of people out there still using Intel Macs and they want to get people off them and into Apple Silicon. However, if you've got an M1 or an M2 MacBook Air and you're thinking about getting one of these, I'd think very carefully. I think there's just two reasons to do that. The first one is that if you're struggling with a, let's say a base model M1 MacBook Air and it's just not coping with your workload these days or the battery has de degraded possibly, get yourself an M3 MacBook Air. The second reason is if you have the 13 inch MacBook Air and like me, you just want a bit more screen estate, then the 15 inch, although you probably won't notice a huge difference in performance, will satisfy all of your requirements. However, if neither of those things apply, just stick with what you've got. There is one downside with this M3 MacBook Air release, which is that the M1 MacBook Air care has been deprecated. It's gone. You can't buy it from Apple brand new anymore. It's just not there. I don't blame Apple for this. They have to move on. They have to put products out to pasture, but I loved that laptop. And in fact, I loved it so much that I made a little video about it this week. If you missed that, keep watching for a link.